All right, now, a guy who understands this very well is uh, former Congressman Alan Grayson. He represented the 8th District of Florida, and he might do so again. Congressman Grayson, great to have you on the program. Thank you. I'm always excited it's to be on your show as you are to have the show. Congratulations on having it. I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy it. Thank you so much, Congressman. So, uh, talk to me about the Republicans. So, they always say that they're in favor of tax cuts. You give them a, a tax cut for the middle class, they say they hate it, right? They don't want it. They're not in favor of it. you got to sweeten the pot for them. Uh, and then they say they're for balanced budgets, but they never balance the budget. So, what are they actually for? Well, they're sock puppets for the rich and for the, the corporations that own them, that own the Republican Party. Let's take a look at this payroll tax that they're so much against. What would it actually do? The payroll tax cuts the cost of hiring people. And the law of supply and demand tells you that if you cut the cost of hiring people, you'll hire more people, there'll be more jobs. What else does the payroll tax do? It puts more money in the hands of people who work, people who need that money in order to survive, people who are in danger of falling out of the middle class. What else does it do? It puts money into the hands of people who actually spend that money and revive the economy in doing so. When they spend that money, and they do spend that money, they spend that money on their rent, or they spend that money on the mortgage. And the landlord then takes that money and goes and gets a haircut. And the hairdresser then takes that money and goes to the restaurant, and on and on and on. It revives the economy. But the tax cuts that the Republicans want to have instead is more tax cuts for the rich, more tax cuts for the multinational corporations, people who don't spend the money, people who take the money out of the economy and leave the rest of us hanging. You know, there's a, a guy who's in the top 1%, Nick Hanauer, uh, he's a good friend of the show, wrote an op-ed the other day, says, look, the rich don't create jobs, the middle class does. They're the ones who buy things. And so if they don't buy anything, then I can't sell anything, which is the most logical thing I've heard. But I actually, the payroll tax cut, I want to go back to that for a second, because, look, uh, you know, I have mixed feelings about it. I'm worried about what it's going to do to the Social Security Fund. But if you're going to do it, there's two different ways to pay for it. The Democrats say, let's do a 3.25% uh, surtax on millionaires. The Republicans say, no, let's do a federal uh, pay freeze uh, for, for government workers till 2015 and let's get rid of 10 percent of the federal workforce. So ironically, in order to give the money to the job creators, they're going to actually cut and kill 200,000 jobs. Between those two options, how is this even a contest? Well, listen, according to what I understand of the President's new plan, you could, you could pay for this entire payroll extension just by eliminating the Bush tax breaks for the rich. The Bush tax breaks for the rich have plagued the economy. Since they were instituted, the number of private jobs in the American economy has gone down by one million. In fact, in the last 10 years, 27 million more Americans, one million fewer private sector jobs. So this whole idea that if we just let these jobs trickle down on us, they'll magically appear and make everybody happy has been thoroughly discredited by experience whereas the payroll tax can't help but create more jobs. So, you know, let's turn to the Democrats, though, Congressman Grayson, because so often they seem to have this huge advantage over the Republicans as they do on, on this issue. You know, President Obama, to his credit, came out earlier today and said, hey, wait a minute, if we don't do this, there's going to be a middle, tax, tax, uh, middle class tax increase. And he even did a countdown clock, and it said it's going to be $1,500. Now, that's good rhetoric, and I, and I think it frames the issue well. But often we talk about concessions, and already the Republicans want a list of concessions if they're going to agree to the payroll tax cut. So they want to do a dock fix, they want to take away some EPA regulations, they want to speed up the Keystone XL pipeline, and the list goes on and on. Why do the Democrats entertain this? Why don't they just go over there and club them in the head po politically with an issue that they're going to, they should be winning it? Well, they should. And in fact, I would have been happy if the president stuck to his original proposal. But the fact is that the Republicans have made their decision They've thrown in their lot with the Koch brothers, with the lobbyists, with the PACs, with the sewer money that provides the great majority of the money that they rely upon to stay in power, and the same kind of money that hit me so hard in the last election. Five million dollars of sewer money coming down to Central Florida to try to push me out of office. That's what the only thing the Republicans really care about. Their constituency is a constituency of two, one Koch brother and the other Koch brother. That's all they care about. <laughs> <laughs> Congressman Grayson, as always, a hoot and a holler. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank really you. appreciate it.